Were you ever reluctant to eat fruits and veggies as a kid? How did adults convince you? Refreshing fruits on a warm day, the promise of a dessert after dinner. Did you ever hear that you needed to eat your fruits and veggies to grow big and strong? Maybe you've only thought of those plants once they're in front of you. But what happens in their lives before they make their way to our plates? If lettuce, carrots, and tomatoes feed our growth, what feeds theirs? Understanding the relationship between plant growth and the process of photosynthesis is fundamental for any biologist. So let's unpack it. This is ASU. The plants in your gardens, backyards, or at a park, where do you think they get their mass? All those branches and leaves must come from somewhere. But where? It turns out that the material is made from carbon. In fact, all living things are made from carbon, including you and me. We get our carbon from the food we eat, but what about plants? You might think it is from the soil or maybe the water, that's not the case. As fantastic as it may seem, plants get their carbon from air. Our air contains a combination of gases. One of those gases is carbon dioxide, and that is where plants get much of their mass. It's part of the process of photosynthesis. You've probably heard that word. Photosynthesis is how plants use light energy from the sun to combine hydrogen in the water with carbon dioxide from the air to make carbohydrates, like sugar, starch, and cellulose. All of those compounds are what plants use to build their tissues. It is how a plant grows and makes all its stems, leaves, and branches. Now, most organisms also hold a lot of water, but this is especially true for plants. Their mass can be as much as 90% water. But the rest of the mass of most plants is built using that carbon from the air. So you could say plants grow out of thin air. But that's only part of the story. When a plant uses carbon dioxide from the air to make its branches and leaves, it helps our climate. Too much carbon in the air can cause temperatures to increase. This makes our climate change and not in a good way. When plants pull carbon out of the air and use it for their stems, leaves, and branches, they lock up some of that carbon, which reduces the amount that's in the air. Now, if you look around at the plants in your backyard and park, you're not only seeing nature's fantastic ability to take what seems like nothing, air, and turn it into plant parts, you're also seeing locked up carbon that's not in our atmosphere. And that's a very good thing. It's such a good thing that scientists, including those like Klaus Lackner, at Arizona State University are building mechanical trees that can also pull carbon out of the air to be safely stored away or recycled. So those vegetables on your dinner plates are more than just a healthy food that's delicious, steamed in a salad or stir fried. And the flowers in your yard are more than just joyful bursts of color attracting pollinators. Just by growing through the process of photosynthesis the plants around us make a more livable world. Photosynthesis is the key to it all, how plants generate mass and how we benefit from this process. Maybe it's worth us eating our greens after all. This was ASU. Thanks for watching.